All right, as we get started, just a couple things quickly. We're going to go over chapter 9 today, which is on fragments. And what I did this, this morning, or actually just sent it out now, but um, I sent you a folder with today's date on it, and it's got two things in it. It's got this thing that's called Android Fragments, which is really pretty good. We're going to talk about that in a minute. And this is the thing from developer.android.com, the other one, and that's a lot, a lot bigger. All right. That's about 20 pages long, and the other, the other one is about four pages long. So we're going to talk about fragments in just a couple minutes. But again, before we do, a couple things. You've got all these URLs and stuff that are in here. You don't have to worry about writing them down because I sent them to you. Uh, when I was checking for something else, I found this. Android Developer Fundamentals. It looks like it's a free course that's put on by Google. All right. And they've even got an advanced one there. And they've got um, all sorts of stuff. They've got lectures online, etc., and a bunch of different stuff. I had just saw it this morning, so I have not looked at it at all. So if you say it's any good, I don't know. In the chapter, they talk about how to do a couple things, but they do them from the perspective of you're using Eclipse. Since we're not, we're going to have to do them differently. So I'll go and talk to you about that for in just a second. All right. I don't know if you've ever seen this site. I, I've uh, pushed this on a few people. I know that I mentioned this to Ethan, and I may have mentioned it to one or more of you, but there's a thing. It's called edX.org, all right? And it's an online education thing, all right? And when you take the classes, they're 50 bucks each if you want to take them for, like, credit. But if you want to audit them, they're free, all right? And so I went in there this morning because I got sent a thing by them, so I just went in and searched... And I did a search on there for Android. All right. And they've got, you know, 9, 12, whatever classes. But the point is, a couple of them that look like they'd be pretty good. This That's a professional one. But they've got two of them here that I noted in those URLs I gave you. One that's called Java Fundamentals for Android Development. All right. And the other one that is called Android App Development for Beginners. Okay, I have no idea how good they are, but I'm just telling you that that's just more resources, more things for you to potentially look for, look at, whatever. All right, talk about that later. All right. So this thing that's right here on the screen, this is the developer.android.com fragments page. All right, in the book, they kind of define a fragment as being kind of a... a an activity within an activity. So in other words, it's a way that you can take your screen and, and kind of chop it up into different sections, for lack of better words. All right, we're going to look at that in just a minute. All right. <clears throat> and there'll be a few other things that I'm going to show you. Yeah, that's something else. So, yeah. And I did the attendance already good. All right, so let's take a look at um, what's in here. What I'm going to do is this. In fact, I've already done it. I'm going to hand it out in just a bit. We're going to go over Chapter 9. It'll take somewhere around half an hour. All right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you your test. Now, what? No, it's, it's, I'm giving it like a take-home test. All right? So I'm going to show you what I'm looking for, and then the rest of the week is just going to end up being lab, except for the first hour... Tomorrow, I'm going to go over chapter 16, or not 16, 14, 13 or 14, beginning of database section. So Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I'm going to do chapters 13, 14, and 15. Monday, I'm going to do chapter 16. Then we're done, all right? And that'll give us time next week. You'll have a lot of lab time, all right? And uh, again, my hope is when we get back from the break, which is the 12th through the 16th, I mentioned this to you before, that Monday that we get back, which is like the 19th, I believe it is, when we get back on there, I'm going to go over Chapter 17, which is on how to basically take your app and submit it to the App Store. All right, so we'll talk about that. After we get done with that, we'll jump right into Kotlin. And probably Monday Tuesday, and Tuesday, we'll just do a bunch of very simple stuff with Kotlin. Then what I'd like to do <clears throat> is between the rest of the week and the following week, is to rewrite two or three of the apps that we've already done, but rewrite them in Kotlin. 
All right. That should get us right to around the beginning of April. And then by that time, you know, I'll, again, I'll have, I'll have given you the last assignment for the project that you're going to do, but you'll have a good five weeks to work on that project. All right. Also be cognizant of the fact that the other thing you're going to have to do is uh, by the end of the semester is update your portfolio. All right, to include Java, Android, Kotlin, etc. However you want to set that up. All right, and all that stuff will be due, you know, by the end of the semester, which I think Ms. Harris has told me three times is the ninth. Is that right? Okay, so make sure I say it right. That's all. All right. <clears throat> so. Chapter 9, again, is on fragments. <clears throat> As it says, they're used for two reasons. In fact, I'm just going to jump ahead a little bit and show you this picture. Okay, and it's not a good one. In fact, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a picture, but not this one. I'm going to show you one from one of the handouts that I just talked about, which I probably already... No, I didn't read it. Good. All right. If you look at the picture on the screen right here, if you've got a wide device... So if you either are looking at something in portrait mode or, or more than likely you're, you're using a tablet and you're looking at it in landscape mode, I should say. If you look right here, what you have are two different fragments. All right, This over here might be almost like a table of contents, where if you pick certain things over here, whatever you pick here is going to show up here. All right? Back in the day, and you may have heard this, you may have used this, I don't know. but not that long ago, when you were creating web pages, what people did was they used frames, all right? And a lot of times, rather than having, like we have up here where you've got the menus on the top, the menus would go on the side. And that would typically be a frame. And you would, you would, that would be a frame there, and then the rest of the screen would be a frame. And you could pick out something. Again, I remember having my students, they had to literally create an online coloring book with animals. And like A would give you alligator. B would give you bear type of thing. And they did all that, and they used frames. That's kind of what this is right here when you think about it. All right? Especially if you had, you know, it, it would be possible, let's say that you've got a game, and, you know, you might be able to start out in different places. You could sit there and set up a fragment here, and depending on what you chose there, you could go to different parts of your game. All right? And in here... The idea is if you're working on a phone, you don't have that much real estate. So when you click on one of these, literally your screen would change from this to this. All right. So what they kind of mention in here in one of these documents is they say that, that a frame is kind of a mini activity or an activity within an activity. And remember that an activity is basically what we've kind of likened to a form. All right. All right. So single pane versus multi-pane, again, a lot of that is how much real estate do you have? Single pane, one. Multi-pane, many. Okay? How to use support libraries. That's where I'm going to break off because of that. They, what they show in there is doing it through Eclipse. The life cycle methods of a fragment. They're almost the same as the life cycle stuff that we've seen before. You've got to realize that your fragment lives inside of your app. Does that make sense? All right. It's just part of an app. So if you kill the app, the fragment dies. All right, so most of the stuff that you do to the regular app, the fragment just goes along for the ride, for lack of better words. All right, then they go and they talk about single pane versus multi-pane. All right, and with, with multi-pane, one of the things that they get into is detecting screen size. You may or may not remember this, but one of the things that we talked about in the AWD 1000 class, the web technologies class, is we looked at media queries. And when we looked at media queries, we talked about the size of different devices. They'll get into a little of that in here right now. All right? <clears throat> so the author here says that a fragment is a class that you can use to define part of a user interface. Again, it's sort of an interface within an interface, for lack of better words. All right? On a small screen, an activity, an activity typically only displays a single fragment. Again, because you typically only have so much room. Now, if you have this, what they're saying is you could have this show on your screen or you could have this show on your screen. Could you have them both show? It would depend on a lot of things. 
how you set it up. For instance, if you have a very small device like a phone, you could take this and put it underneath here. All right. Or you could decide that you would want to show it like this, where you were showing it in a more, you know, in a landscape mode as opposed to a portrait mode. All right. But as always, it depends. Because if you do this right here, if you do all this stuff that they're showing where I've got the mouse going up and down, then you probably wouldn't have room for your keyboard. All right. And that doesn't mean you couldn't make the keyboard appear, but typically, especially if you're doing the app for someone, you want the keyboard to come up automatically. All right. And I should say this, and this is not a slam on anyone in here, so if you think I am, I'm not trying to. From now on, if you are creating your apps, and I, you know, I, I find it unacceptable that if, if you have an app that is taking just numbers, that you don't set your edit text up for a number. You understand what I'm saying? I don't want it to be where the keyboard comes up and, I've, and it, it's got the ABC and I've got to hit the one, two, three button. That's just not the way that it should be. All right. <clears throat> so again, here's their definitions. You can take a, take a look at that. A key thing about this, a fragment can be reused in multiple activities. The reason, again, that that's important is when we go back to that picture I showed you before, you might very well want to reuse that. You know, if you're working on a big enough device or whatever, you, you probably want, you know, if you're going to do it in landscape mode, for example, you might want <clears throat> this fragment to show on every screen so the user can easily jump back and forth between screens. Now, they talk in here about support libraries, and they go through this, <clears throat> and they go through these steps. Those aren't our steps. All right, so what I've given you again on one of these things, I may have closed it, but I don't think I did. There it is. There's how you download the support library in Android Studio. You have that URL. All right, that's in the URLs that I gave you today. Now, does everybody get this? And, and I apologize for not saying this to you earlier. All right, this morning... I went and I, I thought, you know, I never even tried to run that um, rock, paper, scissors that I gave you that I found online. I just wanted to see how it looked. So I ran it, and you may or may not be surprised. It came up with an error. All right? And the error, though, that it came up with was kind of weird because the error was that I was missing some support library. Okay? Which I didn't understand the error because I had the support library for API 27, but this was an error because I didn't have a support library for 25, right, which I didn't understand. So I make it a short story long, but if you look up on the screen here, if you go to Tools and you go down to Android, and under Android, you go to SDK Manager right there. You don't have to do this. I just want you to see it. This has got everything that you've got loaded on the system, all right? Occasionally, you may get something that, because that's where I got an error message that came up over here this morning, way in the bottom corner. It wasn't an error message. It was something telling me that I should run an update. All right. And when I tried to run that update, basically it opened up the SDK manager for me. All right. So I went and added that. And the funny thing is, after I added it, you know, it came up, came up and it said it wanted me to do another update. So I did another update. And then when I did the second update, it came back and it basically asked me, it said, why did you just add 25.0.2, which is the one it told me to add to begin with. And it says, we're going to ignore that. So what I could have done is I could have removed it, so I could come back in again, go to Tools, Android, SDK Manager, find that 25.0.2, which is in here someplace. All right. I don't remember where it is, but it's in here somewhere. And I could click on it to undo it and then tell it to apply. All right. I just left it the way it was. And I don't know if any of you have actually tried to run that the, that one that, that came up. I don't know if this is it or not. I think it is. But the graphics in here, I mean, like, wow. <clears throat>
There's their graphics. I don't find those very professional looking. All right, there's paper. There's rock, which really doesn't even look like a hand to me. And I was going to show you scissors if I can find it. There's And there's scissors. All right. I wouldn't consider that, you know, I, I'm hoping that whatever you present are going to have better graphics than those. All right. <clears throat> so again, if you decide that you need to install the Android support library, I gave you the right URL that you can look at in order to do that. If you've never heard of this term before, I should have mentioned it, and I think I have, but a JAR file is a Java archive file. And what it is, is it's a collection of classes that have been zipped, all right? And the system has got, the software has got smarts built into it that if you go and you download a big JAR file, it only unzips what it needs for the program, and it keeps the rest zipped. Next, they go into the life cycle of a fragment. And again, if you take a very quick look at it, it's very similar to the life cycle of an app. All right. And they even mention that, that it's almost the same thing. It says that they're similar but not identical to the life cycle methods of an activity. The, the important part, though, is when you look here, what this means is anything that you see there in yellow, conceivably, if you create a fragment, you can put code in there. All right. So they first start to talk about using single pane layouts for small screens. I'm going to take a, a long story and hopefully shorten it up somewhat. What they're saying here is you may end up creating several different layouts if you want to make your, your app look as good as possible on several different kinds of screens. In other words, if I know that many of my people are going to be running this on a phone, I would want a single pane layout at least conceivably. But if I know that people might also want to be able to be running this on a tablet, then I would possibly want a multi-pane layout. And they show you how to do both in the chapter. So again, you'll notice how to create the layout for a fragment. It says, what do you do? You start by going into your XML file for the activity. And <clears throat> well, I thought they showed it here, and I guess they don't. But you go literally right into the XML file, and inside of your layout, you go and you add a fragment. All right? And you have it do say whatever you want it to do or say. <clears throat> when you do that, in order for it to be able to do whatever you want it to do programmatically, you'll have to go in and create a class that goes along with a fragment. That's where your code will go. All right? So you set it up. In the XML, you make it do something in the code. All right, and notice that when you do that, you can call it whatever you want, but it must extend the fragment class. All right, and they give you an example. It's kind of long-winded in here. Am I going to make you do this? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make you try to do it. All right, and if you can show me you've given an effort, then I will be willing to give you points for it. <clears throat> Again, it says that the, the code, Java code for a fragment is much like the code for an activity, but there are several differences, especially in onCreate and onCreate view. So if you look through the chapter here, they'll explain some of that stuff to you. All right. I think this, yeah, that's the one I wanted to show you. So you notice you've got your layout, and inside of the layout, they've created a fragment. All right. Now they show you this, but they don't show you what it's going to look like. But again, just kind of imagine that what you're doing is you're taking control of the screen. And I don't know if you agree with this or not, but even in the rock, paper, scissors that I showed you the other day, there was kind of a waste of space in there. All right, There was some space that wasn't being used. I'm going to show you in just a couple minutes how we can utilize some of that space. All right. <clears throat> So to add a fragment to a layout, you add the fragment element, use the name attribute to specify a fully qualified name. All right. 
you can create fragments for anything. So the next thing they talk about in here on page 296 is how to create a preference fragment. All right. And it's very similar to what we just looked at. Okay. You're going to go into your XML file and make some changes. You're going to go in and <clears throat> add a new class. But instead of extending fragment, you extend preference. Fragment if you're working with preferences. All right. All right. <clears throat> Finally, they talk about multi-pane layouts for large screens. And again, my hope is that when it's the end of the semester and you're up here and you are presenting your apps in front of other people and each other, that what you will do is whatever the app happens to be, you will run it both in portrait mode and you'll run it in landscape mode. All right, and that it'll look acceptable as good as you could possibly make it look in both modes. Now, I don't know if we have the ability here that if we try to plug something into, you know, just show it on a phone, if we can show it up there or not. I really don't know, but it would be nice to do that as well. So notice to add more than one fragment to a layout, add two or more fragment elements to a layout file. And there they are. All right. Again, you're typically not going to use this on an app that you're building for a phone. This would typically be used if, if the app was going to be running on a tablet. All right. All right. How to detect large screens. It says, for large screens, you probably want to display one of the two pane layouts uh, that were described in the previous figure. But the, the author says here, the first example is stored in here, large land. So you can create these, and there are keywords that the system will look for to, to try to figure out what goes with what. The problem is, if you say something like that, large land, the system basically considers <clears throat> anything bigger than, than a pretty small phone to be large. So it might even consider a larger telephone to be large. So it will try to treat it as though it was a tablet. All right. So how do you get around that? Well, we see that in just a second here. Notice there's qualifiers. There's large and there's extra large that you could use, depending on the size tablet you have. We do, I believe, that the tablets that we're using are 10.1 inch tablets. So you would probably be using the extra large on yours. But they do a good job of showing how you would set this up, all right, and having one for landscape and one for portrait. Now, I don't want to read this because I don't want to read to you, but if you look on the screen, I'm going to leave it up there for a second, and you'll notice it kind of summarizes what I just went over. And if you notice that second bullet, you are responsible if you, you know, there is a default that will be used. That default will not look the same on every type of device. That default will not look the same portrait and landscape. All right. So if you, if you want to make your app look as good as possible, you know, on as many devices as possible, you're going to have to probably write several of these. All right. And remember that when you're going through this, and if we go back to here, Have the same kind of problem I had before. I don't like to use this file, but <clears throat> let's see. Remember that when you come over here and you've got all this stuff, that you can come over. Notice where it says Nexus 4 here. I can come down and I can change it to something else, and that's just how it's going to look on the screen. All right, that's not exactly an emulator, but you can add a bunch of emulators. All right. Most developers that I know, and there are very few, but I know a few Android developers, they develop, and the first thing they do is they test the hell out of it on the emulator. Then they go and start bringing in the tablet or bringing in the phone to take a look at it.
So it says one problem with the large qualifier, it's what I mentioned before. It says it typically selects a wide range of screen sizes. For example, it selects a 5-inch tablet and a 7-inch tablet and a 10-inch tablet when you talk about something being wide. So how do you get around that? It says that what you can do is there are width qualifiers. This is what I said. It's not the same thing, but it's similar in nature back to the day when we were doing media queries. All right, so what you're doing here is you're giving it size restrictions. All right. And they show you the different qualifiers in here. This is, I mentioned this earlier, the soft keyboard becomes an issue. You only have a certain amount of screen space anyway. And if you start adding fragments and you start, you know, making the, your screen bigger than it would have been otherwise or maybe bigger than it almost should be, you may lose the keyboard. It may not come up and show. So there are different options that you can set for it. Notice they all start with action. All right. So notice if you don't want Android to display the soft keyboard when the app starts, you can delete the request focus element. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this, but that's probably the easiest. If Android does not display the correct action button, you can use the IME options. We talked about those in an earlier chapter. Attribute of the edit text element to specify the correct one on the keyboard. All right, just about done. Other skills for working with fragments, how to get a reference to a fragment object. Well, again, they're talking about code. All right. So it says, you'll notice there's a get fragment manager and there's a find fragment by ID. All right. And if you say, well, that sounds a lot like, you know, find element by ID, it does. And if you notice, it uses the same R file. But now instead, of, now it's using r.id slash and it'll be fragment stuff that you're looking for. And instead of, you know, it's now find fragment by ID. They tell you in here, this is fairly complex stuff, how you can swap one fragment out and swap another one in. I'm not going to go through that. Do you want to use that? That's totally up to you. All right. So I wanted to show you one thing. We'll take a break. So we are done with that section. Again, I'm not going over Section 3 of the book. Section 3, Chapter 10, talks about this newsreader app that has threads, files, adapters, and intents. If you think, geez, I might want one of those, then you're going to have to go back and read it. All right. And again, I have done presentations on those. They're out there on, on YouTube. Chapter 11 uses services and notification. Chapter 12 uses broadcast receivers. So like I said, the next chapter that I'm going to go over in here is going to be, um, is going to be chapter 13, I believe it is. All right? All right. <clears throat> I would like to quickly close this. Again, this is not my rock, paper, scissors. This is the one that uh, the, I gave you that I found online. So open an existing project. I just got to remember because I've got a bunch of these. I want to open the right one. Does it or not? I'm giving you the right steps in here too in the right order so I've got a cheat sheet here.
Well, after the break, I have to show you an email that he wrote to all of us today. Okay. All right. So I'm not going to use that. I just want to make sure I'm showing you the right one here. So. doing that, but it's doing that. to do this later. That's fine. Okay, I think what I'll do is I'm just going to change around the order. I'm going to give you right now what I want you to do for your next assignment. Again, this is a, for lack of better words, I'm calling it a take-home test, which means you're going to do it, but you'll have time in class to work on it. You'll have time at home to work on it. And for lack of better words, I kind of wimped out. And what I did was I went through the book and said, I, I'd like you to do this, and I'd like you to do this, and I'd like you to do this. So over it right now. And we'll take a break very quickly. Then after the break, I want to show you how to import a, uh, a GIF into your project. And then after we do that, the rest of the period will be laughing. <clears throat> All right. I've kind of preached this before, so I'm saying it again, that I've talked to you before about starting with the end in mind. So... There's about 10 things I want you to do, do in here. So let's just go through them one at a time. What I'd like you to do is to make a rough sketch or wireframe. I want you to start with the payment app, the one that you did for your last test. All right, so you don't have to go back and do a lot of rewriting. But then I want you to think about how you want to change it. This URL that's right here is this one this mashable.com and if you look because you you've got the URL it's I gave it to you today also um, but if I look at that URL and talk about that later let's see all right I must have closed it what it has in here is called it says 20 excellent wireframing tools for mobile all right. I have no idea how good they are, etc. We're going to tell you how, but don't get too excited okay. just yet. Whatever. But I want you to look through that, and if you don't want to look through that, find your own. All right. 
But when I say a rough sketch, I don't mean that I want you to give me a piece of paper where you've literally sat there with a pencil and drawn it out. No. I want, I want you to get used to creating a very simple wireframe. Why? Because you are also going to do that for your final project. All right, so this way you've at least been experienced, been exposed to it. So I want you to do a rough sketch of what your completed app will look like. Again, here they've got some examples of different wireframing tools. All right, second, you can use a relative layout. All right, but if you use a relative layout, I want you to embed inside of it one or more of these layouts. So in other words, I don't want just everything in a relative layout. I want you to think about how to lay it out and possibly do some nesting. You might have a relative layout and inside of there you might have the top part of it might be in a linear layout and the bottom part might be in the table layout, etc. All right, so I want you to, to you know, at a, at a minimum, I want you to use one of these by itself or a relative with one of these nested inside. If you want to use several, you can. It's not like, gee, if I use all four of them, do I get extra points? No. All right. One, I want you to add one or more images using a web view or using an image view. I gave you a couple URLs today just so you see these. Boy, why does that keep closing? All right. But a, a couple URLs today, and I want to show those to you quickly. When I was going through and starting to do this stuff, I was having all sorts of problems with it. And I wanted to use the image view, and I had some problems with it. I looked online. I looked and I tried very, very many different things. Some of them with some success, but more often than not, not with a lot of success. So I've got, and again, you've got these. These are a couple URLs. This one is how to add an image to your drawable folder in Visual Studio. This is the one that I used. All right. And just to show you very quickly what I did is I went out to Google Images. All right. So out in Google Images, I typed in I wanted an animated rock, paper, scissors GIF. This is the one I chose. I like this one the most. So if you look at this, the idea is when the program's running, that's what's going to happen that you see right there. Now, you might say, that's ugly or whatever. Now, if you want to, on you know, uh, as an example, if, if you wanted to do something like that, this is where you could create a new screen and put that on there as a home screen. All right? But what I want to show you is how to actually work with an image. I did it with a web view. All right? All right. One or more seek bars. Now think about this. What, was, what were our inputs into this amortization program? They were the loan amount, the interest rate, and the number of payments. I think everybody agree with that. Those are our three different inputs. This one went from 5,000 to 1 million. All right, you're probably not going to make a seat bar that goes from 5,000 to a million. That just is, is too hard. You've got too many values in there. All right, the interest rate went from 1% to 25%. To me, that was a good candidate for a seat bar. All right, where that would be 1 and that would be 25. So you would be replacing in here you would be replacing using that edit text with a seek bar. All right? Two or more checkboxes. And you can't just make checkboxes. You have to make them do something. So you're going to have to go back to Chapter 6 and look at the code for the listener events. All right? Two or more radio buttons. Same thing. All right? 
And I mean, I, I was sitting there thinking about this. Well, how would you want to do this? I don't know. As an example for checkboxes, and this is a dumb example, but it was the one I thought of. All right. What you might want to do is you might want the uh, the final payment to show in different colors or do something else. You could you could do that basically. Maybe you you know the the old idea of bolding, italicizing, underlining. You could set up three checkboxes, and if all three were check were 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 checked, all three checkboxes were checked, then you could have your final payment be bolded, and italicized, and underlined, something like that. All right. Two or more radio buttons. All right. Again, what what how would you use that? I mean, I'll let you think about it. You know, radio buttons are for mutually exclusive choices. So you want to do something or you don't want to do something. You know, and if you say, I, I have no idea how I even do that. You already did that. Remember back in the uh, the class last semester when we did that and you were a veteran or you were not a veteran? So you could you could ask if they were a veteran. And if they were, you could offer them a 5% discount, something like that, all right, as an example. All right, then I want you, to, rather than just sitting there and using the properties window on the side, I want you to go back and look at chapter, chapters 5 and 6 and 7 and look at how you style widgets, all right? So you'll have a bunch of styles and then take those styles and incorporate them into a theme. Either use an existing theme and make changes to it, or make your own new theme. All right. For colors, this should literally take you a matter of minutes. Come up with your own user-defined colors, at a minimum two of them. One of them for the background, one of them for the foreground or text color. If you want to use more colors than that, that's okay. That said, I don't want it to look like something threw up on the screen. All right. I don't want so many colors that it takes away from whatever it is you're trying to do. All right. I'd like you to try to incorporate some kind of, of a simple working menu. Highlighting the word simple. I don't want you to go nuts with any of this stuff. All right. But I'm looking at it that if, if tomorrow and, and Thursday and Friday, if we spend three hours on lecture for the next section, that means that you've got almost nine hours plus you've got about three hours today all right so that's 12 hours that you have to work on this then monday of next week you'll get three hours that's 15 hours of class time that you'll get to work on this and finish up the rock paper scissors one. all right try to do some kind of a thing with preferences again it can be very very simple and then finally attempt at least attempt to incorporate a fragment all right if you say hey i tried but it doesn't work then take your code that you tried to do and just comment it out and let me see that you made an attempt all right finally and i've been doing this all the time 10 percent of it will be did you follow all the rules all right did you follow good naming conventions you know, does your, does your app have a professional look and feel to it? In an ideal world, at least, I'll be able to run this payment app both in landscape and in portrait mode, and it'll look acceptable in both. All right. Does all that make sense? Yes. You can solo it, but it, as long as it, it looks acceptable. Now, and the bad thing about that is that's a subjective term. You know, it could look like really like garbage, but you, you know, I think it looks okay, Jeff. You know, and you know, you know what I'm saying? But with, with some of these, and we've looked at some of this stuff before, you know, again, if I come back to here, that doesn't look bad. If I take it now and change it over to landscape, that still doesn't, that doesn't look bad. All right, but I'd have to run it and see what it looks like when I run it. So what I'm saying is it probably would be worth your time to make a landscape and a portrait layout setting, you know, set, you know set, uh, file for, for your settings and stuff. <clears throat> so notice it's due 4.30 p.m. a week from today. So again, you've got today, three hours. Tomorrow, you'll have three hours. Thursday, you'll have three hours. Friday, you'll have three hours. Monday, you'll have three hours. If we get everything done I want to get done, 
All right. Then Tuesday of next week, I'll see where people are. We'll either start and actually maybe even look at some cop, and then I don't know what we'll do, but probably you'll have three hours then too. That's one, two, three, four, five. That is six straight class periods where you'll have three hours to work on this stuff. And I, my hope is during that, everybody should already be hopefully done with your original rock, paper, scissors, so you can make some upgrades to it, all right? And that can be kind of your practice document for what you'll be doing for this take-home test. Does all that make sense? All right. Like I said, I'm going to go in and see if I can fix this. You want to take a break or whatever, but I want to show you how I added the web view. For some reason, it doesn't like any of my files right now, so I've got to find one that it'll accept. All right, if I can just have your attention, I'll try to do this very quickly. Hopefully, I'll get it to work. Um, what I did was I went out found that GIF, all right, and click the Save button, okay? And I ended up saving this file that you see right here, this animated GIF. I just saved it to my desktop. I'm going to double check and make sure that it's on the desktop. Of course, I don't see it. All right, then I'll try to resave it. Let's see where I saved it to to begin with. There, show in folder, probably into the downloads folder. It's in my downloads. All right. So I've got this file, this animated GIF that I am now saving to my desktop. There it is. If I click on it, you can see it. There it is. Okay. All right. So that is step one of six. Get save your animated GIF file. Next, I want to go over to my to the actual project itself. So I want to go to my project. All right. I can write these steps down, or I can run this off if you're interested in it. And I want to create a new Assets folder. The way I do that is I go under File, I choose New. I thought it was New. All right, I've got it written down. under app I believe there I choose new so app new and I want to go down to folder and I want to find assets folder everybody see that so literally your second step is to go to your app folder right mouse click on it choose new go down to folders and choose assets folder what that does so, okay, it says it creates it where you want to put it. Main is fine, so I'll just say finish. There's my folder. See that? That wasn't hard, so that was step two. All right, I should write these steps. So create an assets folder via app, new, etc. Now I want to add that GIF to the folder. All right, so I should be able to come in here and literally, I think that I can drag it in and I think that that'll work just fine. So what I'm saying is that I can come over here, find the file, right mouse click on it, choose copy, go back to the project, right mouse click on it and choose paste. All right, it says, do you want to copy that file? It's not a very good name. That's just the name that it gave it. So I'm just going to call this RPS for rock, paper, scissors animated. Dot GIF. Okay, click OK. Now if I look in here, there's my file. All that makes sense? So far, so good. All right. So that was steps one, two, and three. Next, I want to, believe it or not, I have to create an HTML file to associate this. How did I find this out? This is one of those URLs that I gave you. All right. So I'm going to literally type in the file. It's only got about five or six lines in it. So as soon as I find it. And the one that they gave in the book, or in the handout that I allude to, 
I had to make some changes to it because there was a bunch of stuff that you didn't need in it. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create that file very quickly and just throw it into here. So. Okay, so there's my file. No idea what I saved it as. I'm going to just save this right now to the desktop for now. So I'm going to do a file, save as. I'm going to save it right to the desktop. And I'm going to call this rps.html. All right, I'll write all these steps down. Okay, I'll, and I'll give you this file and everything. It's not like this is anything special. All right, so now I want to take that file, rps.html. There it is. Copy it to the clipboard. Go back to my folder and paste it in. All right. That's a fine name. So now those are both in there. Okay. All right. Everything's cool so far. So I've done step one, step two, step three, and step four. Now I'm going to go back into my actual program. All right. And I'm going to go into the XML file. And right here, what I want to do, I've got my choice of where I want to put it, but I want that web view to be right above the buttons. Everybody with me? I want it to be there. So I want it to be between my the, the buttons and the title. So the first thing I want to do is I'm just going to go and, and drag a, grab a web view from here. All right. I think it's down near the bottom. That made me a layer. I know it's in here. There it is. And I'm just going to drag it right there. Now it's at the bottom. I don't want it there. I want it above the buttons, so I'm just going to physically move it. So now it's right there. Okay? So now I've got it. It's greedy, etc. So I don't want that. All right? But it is there. That's, a, that's the good news. All right. Now I have to add the associated code to the program. Why? Because it's now it's in here. I really should give it a name. All right? Right now it doesn't have any name, it looks like. So I'm going to call it WebView RPS. I don't know. Not a great name, but it's a name. All right. So now I'm going to come in to the actual code itself right here. And there's a few things that I have to have to put in. You know, literally some code that I have to put in. All right. And again, how did I find this out? I went, I just kept going through different things. I YouTubed, I Googled, etc. All right. So now I'm going to come in here where I've got all my stuff in here in my on create. All right. So I've got uh, my edit text or my, you know, all this, this fine view by ID. So right there, I'm going to put in this WV, that just stands for web view, equals, and again, we don't have to cast it anymore. So I'll just do this. All right, dot, of course, I don't remember, what, what did I just call that? Okay, there you go, thank you. All right, so I want that. I'm getting that message because it hasn't included it, so Alt-Enter. 
enter. Okay, well, you have to come in and you have to you do an import up here. All right. And it's import right there, but it's commented out right now, so I will uncomment it. You need that. Import android.webkit.webview. All right. And that, of course, that still didn't go away, and it should have. I don't know why. Oh, because I never created the variable. How about that? When I created this variable, I should have come in here and said what? Webview. WV. And that'll be my web view. Okay. And I'll put in here RPS animated GIF. All right. So now that error should be gone. It is. And I think there's one more line that I have to put in. And that is, I put in here WV dot load URL file All right. Okay. Now that should be everything. I'm going to check. Save all. I'm going to run this. I didn't do anything with changing the size on that of that web view, so it may end up looking funky. I have absolutely no idea. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try to have it now, see if it saves the state for the right one. one there it is okay so it's a little funky but you can see it at least all right so I'd have to do a little bit of work moving my buttons down etc but you, and you can see it it screwed up a few things but it put it in there so not great not terrible but let's just take it from the top and see everything that you have to do here all right number one <clears throat> you have to get and save an animated GIF all right Number two, you go to your assets folder, you right mouse click, on app, and you choose new, and you choose folder, and you choose assets folder, okay? Then you copy your animated GIF to that assets folder, all right? Next... You come in and you add the HTML. So I'll throw the HTML. I'm going to print this out for you, so don't worry about writing it down. All right. So this is the file I used. It's just got way too many tabs in it, but that's fine. All right. So that was the associated HTML file, and I just called mine rps.html. You call it whatever you want. Create it and add that to the folder. Next, add the web view to the existing program. How did I do that? Well, I had to add some code. All right. So first, you want to import android.html. Webkit dot web view. All right, you know where to put the import, so that's no big thing. Second, you want to create a web view, so where you where you declare the program variables at the top of the program, add this. 
web view, and again, you can call it whatever you want. I called it WV. All right. In the onCreate method, add the following. WV for web view equals find view by ID, R dot ID dot, whatever you named it, I named mine RPS web view. And then underneath that, you say WV dot load URL file. And mercifully, at least, that's it. All right. <clears throat> and add the code of the program. That's what this was. So I should move that down. And add the web, web view to your XML file. I'm supposing I called mine that. All right. Change the font size on this. All those steps I just showed you, just so you know. I grabbed all those steps that I just showed you from, from this. And I gave you that URL, so you have it. All right? Now, I'm going to stop taping, but if you look up on the...